you know, I should update that uh, BRB screen. Because I believe there's a, there's a Facebook link there, but I've like... I've, I've given up on the Facebook page. I mean, for one, it's like... Incredibly saturated. So there's really no point in uh, making a page on Facebook. Um, also... Like, uh, the way I set it up before was that uh, all my Twitter posts would just automatically go to Facebook, but for whatever reason, well, I, I know I know the reason, it's because the, um, the policy at Facebook, some sort of, something to do with privacy, was updated, and it no longer allowed people to send their Twitter posts automatically to Facebook anymore, right? So... And I don't want to deal with that hassle anymore of trying to update uh, like many social media sites all at once, you know? And again, plus for the prior reason, like Facebook's just way too big to make any kind of impact on anyway. So I've pretty much given up on that. In which case, yeah, I probably need to update that BRB screen eventually. Get rid of that Facebook link because there is there's no Facebook link anymore. Well, there is, but it just it just says like the last update I put I was like go to Twitter instead. Don't go here, you know. Uh, but not like anyone knows about that page anyway. Hmm. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Where were we? We were we were playing Mr. Riota's game. You know. And, uh, well, where were the police? We, like, we're stalling for as much time as possible, right? Engaging in philosophical discussion and playing his sick game. We, we even broke his phone to make sure he doesn't get warned if the police do come, but... Where are they? Where are they? How long has it been since we came to this classroom? I wouldn't know, but it's Riolda's turn. You know, I'm really giving you an advantage, advantage here by going first. Now you'll always be one hit ahead. Please, let's just stop. Or rather, what do you say? You know, I'm really, I'm really giving you advantage here by going first. Now you'll always be one hit ahead. Oh, okay, well. Yeah, because uh, his game is that uh, the first one who makes their victim unconscious or accidentally killed is uh, the one who loses. Hmm. Miyamo's just begging. Why stop, please? He ignores my faint whisper and steps forward, adjusting his grip on the pipe. The, mo the boy whimpers. Incomprehensible words spilling out of his mouth. I'm sorry, kids, but the world doesn't listen to begging, and neither will I. He swings the pipe with vindictive justice. Perhaps a payback for my insolence. I flinch instinctively this time, barely missing the moment of impact. And then, a chair screeching against the ground. A piercing scream that rends the air, a light sweet chuckle for a man who's lost his mind. As I force my eyes open, I catch an unfamiliar pungent smell. Vomit, dripping from the boy's mouth, pooling over the sides of his chair to the floor below. My stomach turns over, my grip rattles against the pipe. No, oh, yes. This is life, children. The beauty of pain has no substitute. I step forward, forcing words out of my dry mouth. We... we need to stop. I can't handle this. Riola swivels on me, the joy in his eyes immediately dissipating. We're just getting to the good part. You say you're gonna forfeit? Quitters never prosper, boy, and you wonder why you've never prospered. I drop to my knees, harder than I intend, 
The shakiness of my limbs give my legs a solid blow against the ground. This is no longer an act. Groveling and showing vulnerability, it's not just another strategy anymore. I have no other way out, no other hope. Please, don't do this. Do what? I can't find the words, so I only sweep my hand around the room. Oh, all of this? The whole captivity, capti captivity thing? The game? The fun? I manage a nod. Then, uh, will you lick my shoe? He stamps a foot, of uh, a foot in the puddle of the boy's vomit, shaking it teasingly at me. I don't make a move. I'm waiting. I open my mouth, fighting for words. Nothing comes. The vomit gleams on the sole of his shoe, mocking me. Ryui makes an instinctive sound of distress, gripping her chair with whitened hands. I stare at the shoe, willing myself to lean forward. I don't move. You see, boy, you're not real. You're not ready to really beg. Why? Because you're still clinging to your pride, pathetic as it is. Some part of you believes that you still have control of the situation. Some part of you believes that some miracle will bail you out. If you were really ready to beg, if you really threw away your pride, you wouldn't be aiming for the limbs, no. When you hold that pipe, you'll be aiming right at the skull. That is your only hope right now. The only hope of all of you. Death. But sadly for you, I don't like to rush my executions. It's just such a waste. I shakily clambered to my feet, weighing my arms on the table to pull myself up. Pride? Belief? Control over the situation? Do I really have any of those things? Maybe I was... Maybe he's right. Maybe if I really was hopeless, I would have already crushed two skulls and resigned myself to a long, excruciating death. But here I stand, with a pipe, ready to hit again. Why? So, now that your little dramatic stint has ended, I believe it's time for your turn. He tilts his knife against the moonlight in Ryu's direction, setting a fresh reminder of the stakes. I guess we get to choose again! Again and again, not, not load, save. Same decision. Again and again. <sighs> Hit the girl. I grip the pipe, arms shaking as I raise it over my shoulder. But aren't you stuck here forever? The fight, isn't it getting too tiring? Aren't you exhausted? You're not strong enough to face this. I shake my head and squeeze my eyes shut, trying to knock the voices out of my head. We... we can't do this, Yama. This is wrong. We can't... I swing the pipe. Ugh! No! The pipe drops out of my shaking fingers. I lean heavily against the nearest desk. My knees too weak to support my weight. I can't... I can't do this. No, oh, sure you can. You're doing great. Ryota lifts the pipe over the boy, whose face is coated in a mixture of sweat and tears, slicking his hair against his forehead. The boy's eyes slide to mine, begging silently, hating the day he was born. Ryota sends an icy smirk with a sheen of madness, reminding me of my earlier behavior. Payback, he seems to be saying, but I do nothing. Duh! The note is raw this time, raw from an overused throat that's been screaming far more than it should. When it descends into silence, I can hear the breaths of the two students rattling in their lungs, shallow and anguished. Blood is starting to trickle from their mouths, slowly, down the corner of the draw 
of their jaw and dripping onto their pristine uniforms. Death would be the far better option. How much time has passed? Feels like days stretched out and pushed against each other. Practically, I know that it can't be more than a few hours. The sun hasn't started rising yet, but holding out for this long only seems like delaying the inevitable. And in the meantime, harming innocents along the way. Why? Why did it have to be you? Who? Be specific, boy. I thought, I want it. I wish there wasn't you. Shape up and tell me. Ambiguity helps no one. You shouldn't have been the killer, Ryota. You were supposed to help me. You were supposed to get me through school, through drama, through life. Not this. Never this. Hmm. You know, uh, uh, what's happening? I think it froze. Oops. What, what just happened? Oh no! Did it freeze? Ah, that was weird. Okay, let me try again. Where's I here? Right. Uh, save here. You just have these dumb thumbnails of just Ryota and that same pose. Uh, anyway. You know, what, what did I say? I say that I was when you shape up, tell me ambiguity helps no one, right? Maybe this time I can stall? Because I've always just been hitting the girl because oh, he's always threatening me that uh, if I don't do otherwise, it'll kill me or kill Ryui or do something horrible. But now that I've piqued his interest, maybe, my words mentioning that uh, it wasn't supposed to be you, Ryota, Maybe this time it can stall? I don't know if it'll work. Uh, let's see. I'll try. I thought... I thought that you were with us. Why? Do you feel betrayed? Stall? I thought of... Of all people, it wouldn't be you. Unfortunately, that is a fallacy in your own thinking. But... But why? Why you? You know nothing, boy. Quit your dawdling. That's enough, boy. You've tried my patience for far too long. No, wait. No. No more waiting. His eyes flare with rage as he leans forward. Uh oh. <laughs> Every muscle tightened from spine to neck and instinctively shrink back, mind whirling. If this is the case, I can't just let things continue on. I need to act now. I pull the pipe over my shoulder with great deliberation, as if preparing myself to strike the girl again. A moment passes. Then I fling the pipe around me, straight over the girl's head, and right towards Ryota. Surprisingly, he's caught off guard and barely rises his pipe in time. The force of my blow crashes right against his weapon, driving into his shoulder. He grunts with pain, but I feel no bones give way, nothing that could give me an advantage. Fear strikes through me, or spikes through me, but I refuse to freeze. I continue my assault, swinging my pipe with relentless de desperation, high, low, middle, anything. But with the shock of the initial assault worn off, Ryoda is an iron wall. He seems to know where my blows will strike before I swing them. No, no, I have to hit him. I have to, or he'll take his revenge. I lunge forward, pulling all of my strength into the next swing. Ryota doesn't sidestep, he doesn't duck. He only broadens his stance and holds his pipe on both ends, driving it upwards to meet my blow. The impact shatters up my arms until my shoulders feel numb. I yell in pain, dropping the pipe on instinct. He immediately seizes that moment to bring his own pipe crashing down, right on my leg. Well, things don't look good. Gah! Pain. Nothing but pain. White as a sheet in my mind, washing everything out. Ryota's voice bleeds quietly through the agony, 
low and mocking. Now, child, that's not how you treat your elders. Don't you know that such offenses come with consequences? Slowly, assuredly, he makes his way to Riri, who is bound tightly against her chair. She tosses violently, throwing herself into the wall in an attempt to loosen her restraints, but it's futile. I try to pull myself towards them, as if I can make any difference in my crippled state. The dragging against the ground sets fire to my leg, forcing me to stop. Don't... don't touch her! Oh? How so? He draws his knife forward, fingers tapping idly against its hilt in an artistic form of Morse code. Dread pulses through the agony in my leg, but I can do nothing but watch. Like this? He raises a knife with ceremonial solemnity. Solemnity? Solemnity. The moonlight that screams through the window lights up the hollow crevices of his face, providing a varnish of madness. No! The knife swings down. Blood sprayed against the desks, chairs, and tables. Riri hunched over, still bound helplessly with shackles of rope. She hadn't stood a chance. I should have negotiated better. Should have made sure she was unbound. Shouldn't have attacked Ryota. Should have, could have, would have. All fragments of the future that doesn't exist. There's, there's no more reason for me to continue on. Next target will be me. Bad end. Oh, okay. So I guess you stall too much. That's a bad thing. I thought by stalling I could do something. Because he was interested, right? Hmm. I wonder if I stall again? I thought you would for us. Quit your dolly, okay. I could maybe attack him now? Or it might just end up being the same thing anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just, we just have to play along because uh, this doesn't really do much. If I attack him, it probably end up the same way, really. I'll just have to hit the girl again. I raise the pipe, but my grip falters as my eyes turn to the girl. She no longer has hate in her gaze. She doesn't even have the slightest hint of anguish. Everything is just empty. I whisper it again, that trivial excuse that there's nothing to help the situation. I'm... I'm sorry. This time, though, she responds, quietly, moving nothing but her mouth. I know, and I swing my, the pipe. The, bl the blow rebounds against my arms as the bone of her leg fractures beneath the hard metal. The resulting scream is just another repeat, another skip on the broken record player. I falter backward, the pipe rubbing my hands raw. It reminds me that every bent limb, every cry of pain, is all my own doing. No one held my arm. No one swung the pipe. Every blow was my choice. No one bears that blame but me. And I don't know if I can continue on. There's no sign of sirens in the distance. No janitor making his rounds. Yeah, where is the janitor? Help me, Mr. Janitor. Not even a student in sight. Just four teenagers and a serial killer with a knife. That and one pipe. One solid pipe in my hands. I could say that I don't know what to do. I could say that I'm helpless. But it would be far more accurate to say that I know exactly what to do, and I'm just too scared to do it. What? No begging this time? Why, I'm almost disappointed. He strikes the boy again, a brutal blow that crushes his fingers. The boy wretches as he screeches, choking on his vomit, the wet, crumpled cough that results is far more painful to hear than a deep scream. It's the sound of a human who is slowly dying. S stop it! Please! Somehow... I step to the side of the girl, gripping the pipe so tightly that its rough patches begin to dig into my palms. 
I've gathered enough time. I've tried my best. The police aren't coming. In a situation where there should have been a way out, any way out, there is none. The only relief I can bring is by murdering as many of these students as I can. Murder. I heard so many times that taking a life changes you, that once you get blood in your hands, you stop being human. Would that happen in this case? Killing this girl? Turning me into a monster? Well, it kinda did in that, uh, the first bad end we got. I don't care anymore. I just want this all to end. I need it all to end. I can't take this anymore. Ah, uh, we can kill the girl or we can attack Riola. Again? I don't know. I don't know if attacking him will... It will just be a repeat of what happened last time. I don't know. Let's try, I guess. Okay, let's just things continue on and act now. Hi, low mill anything. Oh, yep, yeah, same thing, right? And then he just kills Ryu. Really. No. Should have negotiated better. You know, yeah, maybe, hmm. Maybe there is a way to get out of this, but maybe I'm already stuck, right? I'm stuck with bad end. Yeah. I mean, I can kill the girl. I mean, this is what we did last time, right? Without all of the preamble of talking to Riola, we just crushed the skull because Ryu wasn't here. Let's do it. This is a nightmare of no awakening. A dark tunnel with no sign of light. What use is it? There's nothing left to wait for. Better end it quickly than prolong me in this pain. I shouldn't have come here in the first place. Shouldn't try to fix anything. Yep. Same thing. No! Gamma! I swing the pipe. The impact rushes assuredly into her skull, splitting it cleanly. She doesn't have time to scream. Wave nausea. Yep. Murderer. Same thing as before, frozen time. And I've... Transform! Into someone else. Choose to die or get revenge and well... This is out of my control and now in my control. And so I wake. Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's a monster! Nyama, what are you? I crush him too. Silence. True strength. W what? I turn my gaze to the man standing by the shattered teacher's desk. He's pretty scared too. Who are you? Why do you ask? I'm simply Yama. Deserves nothing less. What's one different? Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Bernard stays at his side, that he raises his unarmed hand, pointing across the room toward Ryui Hayata. Okay, last time he pointed, like, uh, I guess out the window and said, you know, you're looking for bloodshed and stuff. But now he's pointing at, uh, our, well, our supposed hostage. I don't know if this Yama cares, but yeah, he's pointing at Ryui. I know that look in your eyes. We're now so different, you and I. No. Oh. No, yeah, you want bloodshed, right? So, I can help you. Uh, but I guess not, I guess. 
I guess he was saying like we can like we can just kill Wii Wii together or something. Let's be best friends. No, um, nope. And I kill him. Yay! Well, it's not the best thing in the world at the moment since we've killed two other innocent bystanders. And then I I guess my path turns to Wii Wii, who is still huddled in the corner. Utterly silent, probably in shock. I step towards her, Riona's pipe dragging on the ground behind my footsteps. I come to a halt before her desk. She looks up at me, eyes bright with unshed tears. What is she seeing, I vaguely wonder? A shadow of the boy who was once her childhood friend? A vengeful phantom of the past? Hello, Riri. My voice is plain and flat. Her eyes flicker to the pipe I hold. Hello. Yama. I see you're not attempting to escape. It would of course be useless for her to try, but, as, but that's not the deeper question I am asking. Her lips tremble as they part, but she narrows her eyes, determined. Because I believe in you, Yama. And I always will. She smiles at me, not because she's forcing it, but because she's brilliant and happy and everything pure in this world. I can't restrain myself from lifting a blood-encrusted hand to brush against her cheek, feeling terribly sad. <laughs> that will be your last mistake. Without hesitation, I raise the pipe and... May you rest, Ryui, knowing it was for a purpose. No, oh. I guess that Yama does not care about Ryu that much, so... Oops. Hmm, it seems like no matter what we do, we just end up getting the bad end. Unless... Hmm, because either... Okay, how do we survive this situation? Either we do not go there in the first place from the phone call, or we play... We do something different. We can... Uh, the first choice over here... Uh, we can either, like, uh, torture the students, or torture Ryui, or let Ryo torture Ryui anyway, but, um, it's probably a bad idea. Um, hmm. let's go over here, actually, because I never chose stall before, I just always just hit the girl. Uh, attacking Ryo to just end up the same way, I think, so, what if I stall a little bit more and then, and then hit the girl? I don't know if that will do anything. So this is the first option of these three decisions in this in this game. So what if we like stall? Uh, pipes? Do you think it's a little I don't know dated? Just because something is old fashioned doesn't mean it's bad. Stall again? I don't see what you mean. Sure you do. There's been an advent fan of change, have you? So you're saying that I'm stuck in my ways? We all have a natural tempo, nothing wrong with that. That's certainly a positive outlook. I know what you're trying to do, kid. Cut it out. Make your choice now. Okay, and then we hit the girl. Skip. Everything. Ah, uh, yeah, we have a philosophical discussion, right? And he has a god complex and all that. Uh, let's see. Hmm. What if we stall again? I... I can't keep hitting her. It's a pity that life doesn't change, whether you can or can't do something. Why? Did that happen to you? Oh, are we having a little heart-to-heart? -heart? Then something must have happened. Something that turned you pretty bitter. You'd love if that were true, wouldn't you? Hurry up. Clock's ticking, boy. Yeah, every time he says that, because he's impatient, right? We shouldn't stall anymore, we should simply go along with his game. And skip everything. He's, uh, related to Ikari somehow, the Ikari family. Okay. Uh, begging. Hmm. 
Because I'm wondering, like, if I stall a little bit more, would we... Would it be enough time for the police to come, or does it not make a difference at all, really? So you don't like, so you don't like to rush... I know your little tricks, boy. I'm not in the mood to entertain them. Okay. This time, he's very impatient. Hmm. Yeah. Did we did we uh, destroy his phone? I mean, I was I was assuming that was uh, a plot point, but we, nothing came out of it really. I don't know. If we did that. Did that? Uh, we don't know if we did that already, or hmm. I guess we hit the girl again. Unless I want to have. Well, I, don't, I wonder what happens if we stall again. Uh, I mean, he probably just kills Ryui, most likely, because he just said like, "I know your little tricks. I'm not in the mood to entertain them." Let's try. Stall again. No, wait. No more waiting. Oh no. Okay. Never mind. That's what happens. When it's clear that he's, like, threatening you, you can't stall anymore. You simply have to hit the girl again, I guess. Whee! Okay. I thought I wish it wasn't you. Stall again. If you betrayed, wouldn't be you. Quit your dawdling. <sighs> if I hit the girl, then... Yeah, I hit the girl again. Hmm. Oh, okay, this is might be new. I don't know, I just know that there are three innocent students here. If I don't do something, they'll be stuck in this never-ending psycho of agony. It would've been better if they just died earlier. It would've been better if I just killed them earlier. I don't want to do this, but is there any other choice? I just want everyone to be okay. Hmm. So yeah, this time... Okay, that might be different actually. We've stalled long enough. We picked all the stall options right before he uh, warns us not to stall anymore. So maybe this time we bought, we bought enough time. So maybe this time, we attack Ryota. I don't know. Hopefully the police comes. No. Ryota's the one at fault. And he'll be the one to play. To pay. I pulled a pipe over my shoulder with good, great little deliberation as if preparing myself to strike the girl again. A moment passes. Then I fling the pipe around me, straight over the girl's head, and right towards Ryota. We surprise him a little, but he blocks my piping time. I try to attack him again and again and again, but he simply parries them. Yep. Blocks it. And then he strikes on my leg. Ah! Pain, nothing but pain. What is sheet in my mind? Washing everything out. Ryota's voice bleeds quietly through the agony, low and mocking. Okay, okay, that's the same. It comes with consequences. He whips in Ryu's direction, pipe braced high in his hands when... Suddenly, from outside the windows, light blasts into the classroom, followed by the shrill overtones of a megaphone. Shigure? Jiro Ryota, stand down. You are surrounded. Release the students, or we will shoot you. We did it! Yay! Am I hearing things? Have I gone insane? Is the pain in my leg clouding my mind? My eyes instinctively search out Ryu's. Her expression is a mess. Horror mixed with sorrow, mixed with relief. It's real then. Shigure came. But even though she came, I glance at Ryota. He's, he's frozen in shock, his hands automatically patting down his pockets, searching for his phone. The phone that I smashed to pieces from a metal pipe. Yep, it just solidifies my suspicions. He would have been notified if I hadn't managed to break that phone. But what can we do? I'm paralyzed and really... Ryota's 
hovering right above Yui, knife clutched tight in his hand. And suddenly, he's recovered from his momentary shock, his face collapsing back into a tight smile. Well, looks like the party's over. I draw a shuddering breath. Uh, give it up, Riola. You're surrounded. You're not getting out of this. Oh, I know that. Then, put down your knife. Oh, kid. Can't you already tell? A feeling of dread instantly starts creeping in, like my bones are being frosted over. Tell what? I care, I care nothing about punishment. I do not fear death. All that remains is the beauty of suffering. Ryoda, this is not a warning we will repeat. The fools surely they know better than to bluff when a staff member at this damn academy... Bluff? Simply put, if they wish to hit me, they must mow, mow down the entire classroom. The windows are tinted for outsiders. They are as blind as bats. No, how can that be true? I, I saw you. When I was outside the academy, I could see her through the window. And police, they have to have infrared goggles, some kind of special vision that can help them aim. You, you must be lying. The Emperor in his new clothes. All the fools of the world believe they could see that which did not exist. Only one lonely soul, a mere child, showed them the true path. He releases another bout of unhinged laughter. I unconsciously drag myself backwards, ignoring the pounding ache in my leg. Is this just another step in his delusions? He seems to be spiraling down into an even deeper and darker hole. Come here, my lovelies. You are the last entertainment I will reap from this world. He wants suffering. He wants me to suffer. The primary target of his choice is obvious. He turns to Riri, a flicker of madness in his eyes, as if the appearance of the police was the last switch to his sanity. Ryoda, we will fire in five. Ryoda pounces with an uncanny agility over the desk, flinging his pipe in Ryu's direction as he draws his knife with his other hand. Ryu throws herself to the side, but she crashes into another desk, sending wood splintering to her arms. One, fire, now, now! I hear the rattle of gunfire, but the spray of bullets washes across the window, embedded like knives in a wooden table. Spiderweb cracks cover. Oh, uh, spiderweb cracks cover the windows, but not one penetrates. Bulletproof. That's what Ryoda meant. B bulletproof. How was not? How was this not in the files? Someone tell me how this wasn't in the files. Snipers. The perpetrator is moving too quickly. Uh, RPGs now. RPGs. Animoto, there's a chance that will kill the students. They're already dying! Fire those weapons now! Ryoda ignores the outside commotion and tackles Ryu against the wall. I hear the dull thump of her head slamming into the plaster. <sighs> Enough of this squirming. Ryu's grip tightens on his knife. He raises his hand. In one fluid motion, without hesitation, he pins one arm over her head, then drives the knife forward straight toward her wrist and... Uh, really? I throw myself forward and my leg screams in protest. Helpless. Again. Oh yes, what a lovely color. He drags a finger along Ryu's forearm, smearing blood against his palm, against his palm and licks at it with a look of utter bliss. My vision shuffles in front of my eyes as the ache in my leg spreads to my head. You, dear child, shall be my uh, peace, uh, peace, peace the resist, resist, resistance, peace the resistance, peace the resistance or something. I don't know. It's French probably. Peace the resistance, peace of the resistance or something. <laughs> Uh, with his heel grinding into my other hand, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out something with what expands like a butterfly's wings. A cold, gray switchblade. 
No. No, Ryota, don't. He only smiles wider in response, leaning closer to the switchblade hovers right up below her cheekbones. Your face, dear Yui, is so very lovely. It shall serve as an excellent base. No. No, please. Bad end? No! Nah. <laughs> so that didn't work either. Hmm, I thought we won! I thought we've won, but it's another bad end. So much bad ends. And if I remember correctly, actually... You know... Um... Hmm... I remember, uh, like, uh, was it? Yama... Mentioned that uh, getting Yui out of her restraints would have been a good idea, but I don't know how to do that though. How do I do that necessarily? I have no idea. Hmm. I don't know, go back here and. Oh no, never mind. I already stalled. The girl. Stall. 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 And then hit the girl again. Save here. And I guess this time... I guess this is the, I guess the stall path where I st stalled a bunch. Um, I attack Ryota, but that just ends up with my... That just ends with my leg being hurt, right? In which case, he just ends up killing Ryui. What if I kill the girl? That makes us a killer, but... Will that make any difference? Because the police will come, right? Or will they? I don't know. Hmm. Kill the girl, but, I'll f by our, but I falter. Hmm, okay. I, it is, Yama is saying some, something different. I stand stiffly, the pipe frozen in my hands. Should I just hit her without a killing blow and let the game continue? I can't kill her just to take the easy way out. But, I don't think I can keep sustaining my sanity. It would be easy. Everything would be over. You don't need to bear this burden. This is what my mind is whispering to me, but... I don't know whether to trust it or not. If I could see the ending, I would know. Well, we've seen multiple endings, Yama, and they're pretty bad. If we somehow end up getting out of this, then wouldn't she be glad to be alive? Even with those injuries, because at least she has a second chance at life. This pain, this suffering, it'll hurt and it'll scar. But maybe she could find her dream career, or marry a wonderful husband. Something that just makes living worthwhile. But, if you won't get out of this, if the only thing that's in store for us is an agonizing death, against which we're fighting in futility, it would've been better if I just killed her in the very first stroke. How can I make that judgement? How could I possibly predict that burden? Can I really choose to end someone's life in my own hands? I can't see the ending. I don't understand fate. I wish I could know the answer. But there's nothing for me. No one can see the future. If you dawdle any longer, kid, Ryu gets the short end of the stick. Or the pipe, however you prefer to say it. No more time. No more chances. I've held out as long as I could. I raise the pipe over my head, aiming it directly in line with the girl's skull. She smiles tremulously and understanding, and closes her eyes. Acceptance. Perhaps even gratitude. Because somehow, we've landed in a situation where a quick death is merciful. What if... What if I had been faster? What if I had been smarter? If I caught Ryota before today, none of this would have happened. Why did I sit still in one place and allow this to happen? My arms shake as I will them to descend. I can't hesitate. I need to strike decisively. If I don't, the result will, only, will be only unconsciousness, a splitting headache, and no clean death. The girl doesn't deserve to wake up again in this nightmare. No one does. And with that, I guess it's time to become a murderer. I raise the pipe even higher, counting softly in my head. 3. I'm sorry it wasn't enough. 2. I'm sorry you had to face this. 1. 
Then from outside the windows, light blasts in the classroom, followed by shrill overtones of the megaphone. So I guess, yeah, so instead of trying to fight Ryota and getting our leg hurt, maybe this time, since we stalled long enough, you know, playing his game, and we also we end up, you know, the police comes before we land the finishing blow, maybe this time we have a chance at uh, saving Ryui from Mr. Ryota. And if, if, if this is correct, then this might just be the correct path. In which case, I'm gonna save it here. And I know I'm kind of like, it's kind of a cliffhanger. But, uh... What I want to do is try out the other options, because I don't know... I'm, I'm thinking the other options also go to bad ends. Like, for example, okay. Uh, for example... Here at the beginning, with the phone, I just want to see. Like if it's short, then I like yeah, I just want to see if it ends up being longer than I expected, and I'll just go back to where we were. But this is we rejected his terms. Uh, remember, like when he gave us the phone call, we rejected his terms. We say we want to meet with Ryu first, and he says yeah, sure. Um, that's why I, that's why Ryu is in the classroom. But what if we reject it again? What does he say? Does it just end up being a bad end again? I'd also like for Ryu to be untied. Hmm. Interesting. So she can run away. As if you wouldn't be able to chase her down. Hmm. Playing hard to get, aren't we? Fine. Oh, interesting. Okay, so actually we've learned that you can reject his request twice. In which case, what happens here? Hmm, I guess we're just warping like uh, in time. Back and forth. So I wonder, yeah, that's how you get Ryu's to be uh, Ryu to be untied because before she wasn't, right? So in in which case this might still end up badly. <laughs> so let's see what happens actually, because yeah, that might be the answer, right? To untie her. Jiu or Ryota, stand down. You are surrounded. Release the students, or we will shoot you. Am I hearing things? So desperate for reprieve that's throwing up whatever it can to stop my pipe. Uh, I looked really, she's shocked and horrified. It's real then. Shigeri came. Yay! No, wait, it's not over yet. We're still in this room with Ryota. Two students are still in a very dangerous position where they might lose their lives. He's frozen in shock, searching for his phone, which I destroyed. I confirmed my suspicions. We have to run. Uh, you chase her when you stop from chasing us. I lock eyes with Ryu, but she only looks back desperately, her eyes wide. Of course, she's still tied to a chair, yeah. Now's my only chance to run, but if I leave Ryu behind, if I leave Ryu behind and flee, Roda, he'll be furious. He'll take it out on her because he knows the best way to get to me is through her. I should have pushed to have her be untied. Ah, well. Okay, I guess this is the hint. That we're supposed to go back and asked for her to be untied. If we both ran, he would have dropped everything and chased after us. What could I possibly accomplish if we were tied up? Which has been a little faster, a little smarter. Ryo is already covered. Or recovered. Looks like the party's over. Drop every last bit of courage to stand tall. I'll give it up. You're surrounded. You're not getting out of this. Oh, I know that. Then put, up, put down your knife. Okay, can't you already tell? I'm fucking insane. I don't fucking care. Wah! Tell what? Care nothing about punishment? I'm gonna fear death. I told you to suffer. Yoda know, is not one, we will repeat. The fools. Because we have bulletproof glass, they can't hit me. Tinted for outsiders. I guess, well, he says tinted, but like not literally tinted. Tinted in the sense that uh, they can't shoot in here. Alright. He's laughing. He's very, very insane. Three students are bound. Two of those are mortally wounded. The primary target of his choice is obvious. Well, then we'll fire in five and... Yeah, pounces with uncanny agility over the desk. Flinging his pipe in my direction as he draws his knife with his other hand, I guess. Yeah, last time he went for, for uh, Ryui. Now he's just gonna fight me. 
I instinctively throw myself to the ground. Leftover shards of wood and plaster dig into my arms, sending spikes of pain to my shoulders. Yeah, we did get some... We were damaged a little from that fight where we tried to... Or we did, anyway. We destroyed his phone. And she got fires, the police fires, but it doesn't go through. Bulletproof. Snipers! Too quickly. RPGs! No. Tackles me. He ignores the outside commotion and tackles me behind the desk. My head slams against the wall. The shock of pain sends ripples of blackness in front of my eyes. Enough of this squirming. I see it before I can react. Ryota's grip tightens on his knife. He raises his hand. In one fluid motion, without hesitation, he pins one arm over my head, then drives the knife forward straight toward my wrist and... Ah! Nyama! Oh yes, what a lovely color. He drags a finger along my forearm, smearing blood against his palm, and licks at it with a look of utter bliss. My vision shuffles in front of my eyes as the agony pounds at my wrist, helpless, powerless. You, dear child, should be my piece de resistance. I guess this time it's me. Oh no. Butterfly wings, his old, his cold gray switchblade. No. No, Ryoda, Ryoda, don't! He only smiles wider. Yep, below my cheekbones. I'll start with your face, so as Ryu seems so utterly besotted with it. No. No, please. I'm dead. Oh well, I guess instead of Ryu dying, I'm dead now. Eh, that's too bad. Hmm, which makes me wonder... Okay, I'm trying to explore all the choices here. We Before we get to choose uh, either two students or Ryu and the Skeleton, right? I wonder what happens if we choose Ryu and the Skeleton. Hmm, is it the same thing or... I don't know. I want to see what happens. <laughs> as morbid as this sounds. Even if it means Ryu will suffer, wouldn't it be better for just one person to face the consequences? Yeah, if you remember, we were given, this, uh, given an option here. That's what I try to tell myself. If I pick Ryu, then only a plastic skeleton will be my victim, not another human being. She can hate me, but I need to choose this. Then, I pick Ryu. Surprise flickers across Ryu's face. This is clearly not the outcome that he had been expecting. Hmm, really? Neither did I, in all honesty. Hmm. Wanna play the hero, I see. I- I don't... I look at Ryu helplessly. I don't know why. Seeking penance, maybe? Reassurance? Either way, it's a stupid decision. She must hate me with every fiber of her being. Even if she doesn't right now, she'll end up hating me in the future. She looks at me tearfully, but there's no sign of hatred in her eyes. She even offers a weak smile. A smile? Why? Surely it's not out of gratitude. I can't say that it's out of pride in making the right decision. I read her gaze silently as Ryota hauls her across the room. She grunts in pain as she slams the back of her chair against the desk, but that tremulous smile remains. Ah, I understand. She isn't smiling because of the emotions she's feeling. She's smiling determined because she knows that's the last time I can see her smile. I freeze at the realization a throbbing pain resounds in my chest. The last time. Now I have to believe that Shigeru will come. I have to trust that she'll make it in time. Why, Ryu, why my foundation? Well, why Ryu, why my foundation? Why of all people? No, focus. Focus and trust. I can do this. I force a tentative smile, pushing it against, uh, pushing it across my face, even as every muscle screams against it. Ryu's eyes glisten in the moonlight, full of unshed tears. Then Ryota straightens, ignorant of a little moment, and clears his throat. Now, shall I explain the rules? Okay, he's playing the same game, I guess. Two metal pipes. 
for as long, if you stay, stay sane for as long as we use conscious, well, you win. Everyone's a winner. But? I just hit some plastic skeleton and stand idly by as Riona wails on Ryui. He hits her until she falls unconscious. Oh, that's, that's, that cannot, that can't be. He'll kill her that way. He can take his time, hitting her toes and her foot and her ankle and her knee, working his way slowly as it breaks her body. Pain and torment without any sense of the relief that is unconsciousness. My hands shake uncontrollably as Ryota unceremoniously dumps the pla plastic skeleton at my feet. He gazes at, up at me with a macabre grin, macabre, macabre grin fixed on its face. Well, procrastinators never prosper, so might as well get to work. He raises his pipe with great melodrama and really whimpers reflexively. No, wait. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have picked Ryui. But I was too curious, because I picked the other option last time. But Ryota's pipe is already in its terrible trajectory, soaring downward and... Ah! Ryota's face contorts with agony as Ryota's pipe slams right on her toes. Her scream rips through the air and claws at my eardrums. She... she wasn't supposed to suffer. I was supposed to save her. Not Ryui. Anyone but Ryui. There's a shrill noise in the space between my ears as my vision pulses angrily, tilting my sense of balance. Yeah, this might be a bad idea because I remember, well, because, um, like, again, objectively, you know, only one student is suffering, but for Yama, this might put him off, you know, he, he probably won't be able to think clearly if Ryota's just there torturing Ryui. Hmm. Hmm, what's the matter, boy? You weren't supposed to. Ryu wasn't supposed to. I thought that. Suck it up, kid. This is how lovely the world is. Your play. George the skeleton's about to have a bad time. He points casually at the plastic skeleton in my foot, completely unaffected. There's not a single shred of humanity left in him. Nothing that shrinks back at the prospect of harming another human being. Just pure. Uh, pure malice. Nothing that I can fight against. We haven't got all day. Are you trying to stall? I swallow, mouth painfully dry. I lift the pipe and slam it into the skeleton without much thought. The femur breaks cleanly, skittering into two pieces. Plastic after all, not very strong. Even so, just the sight of it turns my thoughts to Ryu. What effects did Riona's blow have on her bones? How much pain is she going through? Boring. Glad it's my turn again. You really know how to kill a crown, kid. He turns away and raises his pipe again. No! Swings it down, biceps corded with tension. Gah! Stop. Make it all stop. She's not supposed to die. She's not supposed to suffer. Ah. Uh. My head shrieks with pain as I crumple to the ground, the pipe rolling out of my hands. Agony. Nothing but endless agony. Not her. Uh, not her. Then I'm overcome with a wave of nausea. Hmm. This is a lapse or... No, not the skinning blow of a fever or a flu. Something on a deeper scale that flows to the outer edge of my body. A sensation that's slimy and uncurable. Again? Well, yeah, again. Again, my mind whispers. Again, again, again. Signs from Ryota, signs from Ryui, not a single peep. Even the students in the back of the room are silent. Maybe they're trying to blend in the background. Maybe they want to be forgotten. Ryota should be cackling with satisfaction. He's breaking me, and breaking me effectively. And everyone just stares at me. Time stops again. I guess we transform again? I guess, yeah. Seeing Ryu getting hurt, that's what uh, transforms us as well. Mm -hmm. Who's there? Nothing? There's nothing left. He's out of my control. Just give up and die. Or I could just murder everyone again. 
Alright, we transform again. Hmm. Okay, so yeah. If we pick that option, then uh, we just turn into this Yama once more. Ryu's eyes glaze with pain, slouched against her chair, her feet most certainly mangled beneath her schoolgirl loafers. She is my first priority. I step next to Ryu and reach out a hand, brushing my fingers against her cheek. Ryoda does not move. He seems surprised at the motion. I take advantage of the moment, leaning into to press a kiss against her forehead. Mm -hmm. Sweet Ryu. She doesn't deserve none of this. Yama, be at peace. Before Ryota can move, I raise the pipe. One death final swing that hits dead center. Ryu's neck snaps backward at the impact. Then she rests quietly. Hmm. I straighten, closing my eyes at the solemn moment of peace in the classroom. She deserves a moment of silence for respect. You monster! How could you? I guess, you know, I mean, I guess from this perspective, from this Yama's perspective, the totally insane Yama, I guess death equals rest. You know, no more pain, no more suffering. Everyone, dead. Well, my eyes snap open at the unwelcome interruption and turn to the back corner of the room, where the two captive students are still bound to chairs. Hmm. I'd almost forgotten about them. Arriving against the chairs, a toxic concoction of anger and terror swimming in their eyes. Truly tragic. Very obnoxious though. Disturbing the circuit moment. And I go to them. I have only one can he's uh, of course, only one person can. He's currently past the fire on his own in his own shock. Bow bow! Double kill! Uh anyway. It's quick work to swing the pipe twice more. I mean, no resistance. Instant silence. I guess. I mean, this time, I think Riodia has reason to be scared because the last, well, the last two times we transform. I mean, we don't, we don't really like. We just kill them instantly and stuff. But killing three students in quick succession. Now nah, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty scary, even to another killer. I think. Right? Same thing. Who are you? I'm Yama. Well, a different Yama anyway. Something different. You want... Touch it, right? Oh, he points at the broad window which leads in the pool of light on the body that was once Ryu Hara. I guess he points again to Ryu, but well, it's a corpse of Ryu anyway. Not so different. You love to kill. Hooray! Let's let's team up and kill more people. Mm, nah. And I kill him. Dead. Well, once again, unfortunate boy, Rijiro. A Geo, Ryota, an unfortunate boy, an unfortunate girl, a Ryo, Ryui Hayata. The only one who could possibly have stopped this metamorphosis. Hmm, I guess so. But well, I mean, we did transform Biwa like with Ryui like alive, right? Alive and well, but we still just end up killing her anyway. Hmm. None of that matters now. The new story shall begin here. Well, he opens that window, right? Well, I wonder, does he? Because I, I was like assuming Yama just goes on to just kill a bunch of people, just like like a new serial killer, or he could just like he's from the second floor, right? So actually, hmm, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, he might survive that fall because I was thinking like he was just gonna jump through the window. If it, if it was like a big fall, then he would just end up killing himself, right? So. It was like second floor, right? So, mm, two stories, it's like, I don't know, I guess he's like Super Yama now, so maybe he, he might survive the fall and go on to, I guess, supposedly destroy the entire city. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, 
That's not great. But we now know we've exhausted most of our options here. What we can do is go back here to this phone. And I remember actually there was a there was a choice, right? There was, there was a choice to um like uh, receive the call from uh, Shigure. I wonder what happens if we don't, right? If we don't, then the police never comes. In which case, yeah, we just get the typical bad ends that we've been getting, right? So I think, yeah, it's important to get that call from Shigure so the police comes, you know, so we get that, uh, so we can stall for enough time for them to change that final scene, right? And also, we need to come back here and reject again, so we want to demand that Ryu would be untied. So this time, I think, you know, when the police does come, we can escape with Yui, I assume. You know? She's gonna run away, as if you won't be able to chase her down. Playing hard to get, aren't we? So magnificent, or so, how you say? Magna- Magnanimous? Magnanimous? Would your highness also like a pony? Any new terms stacked odds more in my favor, but I'm currently in, not in a position of power. If I push too hard, everything could go south. Hmm. Okay, so this time, we have two demands that we've uh, given and he's accepted. So I assume this is the correct path. But you know, what, what if we reject again? I wonder what happens. The more advantages I push for, the better off I'll be later, right? Yeah, technically. It's worth a try. I might only have one shot at this. There's one more thing. Say, kid. I don't know if you're stalling for time, but there's only so much garbage that I'm willing to put up with. Haven't your parents taught you what happens when you're greedy? You lose everything. His voice is cold, or is as cold as steel, turning my palms sweaty. I get a terrible feeling that I've just made a mistake. Wait, then I... No. No more playing around. Seems like you got too caught up trying to play God, kid. Ryu's staying out. Sorry, I guess you won't be able to see her. Get over to the back of the school. I'll give you 15 minutes. If you don't come by by then, well, I guess you say goodbye. Bye-bye to dear Ryu. Oh, okay. So I guess it's just the same thing as if we didn't negotiate in the first place. So yeah, so we... So yeah, and I guess, yeah, we don't have the decision to stall anymore. And we just get another bad end. Okay, so that's what happens. So, most likely, we do, we just need to accept these terms. Right? Bam. Now, if I'm honest, there's not a whole lot more I can ask without making the request seem downright ridiculous to Ryota. Ryu's gonna be there. I'm gonna see her. The police will know where I am. This is the most I can ask for. Back to the school then. Give you 15 minutes. You better run. Ta-da! Wee! Okay, same thing. Okay. You think I'll be desperately... Uh, I wonder... Well, I'll just... Yeah, skip. I don't know if there's anything different. If there is, like, new dialogue, then yeah. You know, I wonder... actually... Is there any difference in, in the text? I mean, she's untied, right? So she, she's not, like, stuck to the chair or anything. Hmm. Actually, I really wonder, like, there's, there's a bunch of, like, branches you could do here. They all end up, like, bad ends, but there's, like, like slight differences in how it all ends. And our, or, well... Well, I mean, again, it ends the same way. We all die, but... Or at least, well, we, either we all die or uh, Yama goes insane, I guess. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I'd like to explore those differences, if possible. I don't know, I think... Didn't, like, Yama mention that... Hmm. There's one more thing I want to try. Because I think I know, I think I know the path to finally catch Ryota, right? And, well, escape, basically. But I want to try one more thing, I think. 
Actually, well, actually, we're in skeleton. Is it the same thing? Is it the same thing, actually? She's untied, right? But I guess... No. I guess she's forced to... Yeah, it's just another bad end. Never mind. Um, actually, where was I? Here, right? Okay, two students. Skip. Uh, well, now that everything's set up, I need you to untie Ryu. Okay, so yeah. Uh, you know I can't do anything to you while you still have that knife, and neither can she. And neither of us will leave the other person to die either. Hmm, okay, so she was still un uh, she was still tied, I guess, while we were making that decision. And now do I say, yeah, untie her because we made that promise before, I guess. Only because you're the teacher's pet boy. He stalks over to Ryu's chair and cleanly slices at her bonds. She promptly claps her hands together, breathing deeply. Don't run, Ryu. It'll kill both of us. I... I won't. I turn back to Ryoda, hands sweaty against the fabric of my jacket. Okay, so we're back to playing the game. So that's like one detail we've... kind of, uh, changed up to this point. Okay. Blah 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 blah. And I guess, yeah, you can stall, you can whatever. I wonder what happens... Okay. Because this is what I was wondering. If you just if you just, you just hit 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 the girl, then we just go insane. If we attack Ryota, then we probably we, we lose basically. Hmm. Stall. Nah, no, that doesn't. I mean, stalling is basically yeah, stalling for Shigure to come. What if I just attack Ryota now? We we uh we get hit right. We get we lose basically, and he goes towards Ryu. But Ryu right now is on tie, so she can escape, right? So I can sacrifice my her myself for her, if that's an option. So maybe? Can't let anything go I need to act now. Am I fling the pipe around me? Straight over the girl's head. Actually, it's, didn't it say like, strike the girl again? Did I strike it- strike at her before, or? I don't think I did. She's- I think she's untouched, but I guess the- the- the writer or developer didn't anticipate that. To choose that option right away, so strike a, the girl again. I didn't strike her before yet, but anyway, I try to fight him. He he easily overwhelms me. Hits my leg. So Chuyo, you really ought to have better matters, but oh, okay, it's because uh, Ryu is untied, right? So, but suddenly, I catch a blur of orange from the corner of my eye, and Ryota hisses, or hi hisses through his teeth. In the midst of the commotion, Ryu has crept beneath the desk and sidled my pipe into her own grasp, a pipe that she just slammed into Ryota's knife arm. Hmm, okay, good going. The knife tumbles out of Ryota's grasp and skitters across the floor as he stumbles to the ground from the impact. Ryu doesn't let up. She swings the pipe again, straight into Ryota's neck. He emits a choked screech, but when he turns in her direction, his pipe soars with an uncanny precision. Ryu's eyes widen for a fraction of a second, and he slams the metal directly against her forehead. Well, that didn't end well. Ryu, well, she tried her best. Ah. Uh, I hear the bones of her skull crumple at the force of the impact. I see her eyes empty and half a heartbeat. I hear her breath catch, quietly, like a very respiratory system didn't want to be a bother. I see her head throw itself backward in an unnatural angle, limbs splayed like a broken doll. I hear a moment of utter silence. I see her collapse gracelessly against the wall, blood pouring from her head, water from a shattered dam. A haystack, a roll of carpet, so terrifyingly limp and fragile. My mind is trapped in that moment, rewinding and playing and rewinding again and playing, but my body moves of its own accord. Ryoda, still trying to recover from his crushed windpipe, is instinctively clutching at his throat. I seize Ryoda's pipe and without hesitation, crush it against his skull. Ryoda crumples into a lifeless pile. I stand there for a moment, frozen. Blood, Ryu's mixed with Ryoda, oozes down the length of the pipe, 
collecting in the gentle ellipse of a crimson on the floor. On the floor. Hmm. This is not what I wanted. I wanted to sacrifice myself for Ryu, but I guess Ryu, instead of running away, fought for us, and well, that just ends up taking her life instead. Silence, save for my breathing, heavy and fast. The two students only stare at me with wide eyes and teary faces. Blood, vomit, puss, saliva, mixed in a toxic concentration and polluting the air. Pus or... no, oh, pus. I think it's pus, not... anyway. <laughs> the pipe slips from my fingers and clatters surely against the ground. I'm shaking. It's like the joints of my very bones are knocking against each other, driving the breath from my body, trembling like a leaf in the wind. Slowly, I draw to Yu's side and kneel next to her. My injured leg screams in protest, but even the pain seems eerily distant. The knees of my trousers meet blood. They soak it up without protest. I cradle my hands against Ryu's and stare at them, refusing to look at her disfigured face. Ryu, he's gone. I give her hands a gentle squeeze. They're still warm. She's still warm. Riri. Should have been a stab wound. She should have hit his pipe arm. He should have stabbed her. The hospitals can mend a stab wound. But a crushed skull. An instantaneous death. Hey. I was supposed to tell you something. You can't leave me while I'm still talking. She is still and silent. Fatal blows aren't supposed to be so quick. There's supposed to be a, at least a moment, a grace period to share a single word, a look, a touch. I'm sorry, I would have said. It's okay, she would have said, or if she couldn't forgive me, then act like it, dummy. My hands gl glide up to her shoulders and gently shake her back and forth. I feel droplets of blood flick on the back of my hands. Riri, hey, wake up. Riri. Riri, the police are coming. Riri. No. This can't. She can't. We were supposed to be okay. It wasn't supposed to end like this. Riri, she. I. It's cold. Why is it so cold? Riri, don't leave. Don't leave me. I. I don't have anyone left. Riri. Well, it's another bad end. Bad ends galore, really. Uh, but I'm gonna try and get that golden path. 